Hey, greetings YouTube. Performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. Quick post-production note. I noticed I had a little bit of a stuffy nose when filming this, and it was really cold in my shop that day, so I apologize for that. That was picked up on the microphone. And I also do change the camera angle several times when filming this, so be aware of that. Thanks for watching. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss my latest videos, and on with the repair. And today I have a Bosch formula. And Bosch vacuums are kind of a rarity here in the United States. Uh, they were brought in for like five, maybe ten years. I think, I think probably closer to five and cut short. So they're real rare. This is one of those vacuums I got from a local store that was going to throw this away. Um, so I knew it was rare. I said, well, it's worth saving at least for parts. The more I get to look in it, the more I wonder if it's, you know, just something simple. Um, this is too loose for me to feel comfortable plugging it in. So first thing I'm going to do is we're just going to check this aftermarket plug, which is, uh, man, it's been zapped. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, show you what happened here. All right. So you see the plug is melted right there. And the reason that's melted is, well, this plug was not really put on right. So, and it melted back. Yeah, you can see that it just fucking sparked. So, somebody did that repair wrong. And a, a plug's an easy repair. It's That's that's when I'd be super critical. Yeah, whoever did this, fuck. Fuck them. So yeah, the first thing it looks like is, uh, you're gonna need to take care of this plug now. Cause it's a cord reel, I'm gonna just put a knot in here temporarily. In case when I'm working on it, I accidentally hit the button and it gets sucked in. I don't want that happening. I appear to be out of plug-ins. Uh, I usually keep some on hand. I will have to order some of those or go. I don't really like going to the local hardware store during COVID times. Um, it's just, uh, I think just for testing, I'm not gonna run it for a long time. I think if I just, do that plug for testing and at least put the plug end on right. Man, this is like the same sort of like thick polyurethane cord that Mila uses. Here goes a... Really? Really? All right. Well, despite that plug being questionable, um, and the cord rewind on this, is kind of sketchy. Actually, the whole thing looks like somebody really beat on it who did not understand how to take this apart. Uh, so let's go ahead and open it up. What was that? Um, the pre-motor filter is missing completely. The post-motor filter. HEPA could look worse. It could be a lot worse. Everything else. Airsafe hygiene technology, silence. They have like the advertising marks on the inside of the vacuum there. I don't know if I'll pick it up, but that's kind of weird. Oh, I love stuff like this. This is so just wacko and weird. I just love things. Anything of this turn of the century, you know, early 2000s, there was just such a time of weirdness going on with all sorts of industries. And I'm just going to take everything apart. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to take the uh, 
the cord off the lid. Oh, it's not a T20. Oh, it's not like a Milan uses a T20. Oh. All right, those are T15s then. Assuming I have a T15. Let's see if that's... How about that? T15's like a Dyson. Actually, the screws look very similar. That, the more I take this apart, ha, huh, it's exactly what I was expecting to find. I thought there'd be a quick disconnect. Because usually, that's how these uh, sort of German canisters are. The SIBOs are the same way. Huh. This is one I have not taken apart. Uh, I've seen one of these or two of these come in for service over the years, and they've all had like hose issues or whatever. I've never actually had to take one of these apart. So I'm curious to see what's going to be inside here. And like I said, I'm kind of just kind of guessing. So, you know, you usually see these big tutorial videos for me where I'm like, oh yeah, I've done this a hundred times. I've not done this one a hundred times. So again, a little bit of guesswork. Ah, there we go. There we go. All right, so the lid just pops off. And then we can just pop this off the lid. There's the cable, a nice cable. And do that. Now we're left with the base of the machine. And if I had to guess, first thing we're gonna do is, these are, these are the kind of reel you have to just pull it just right for it to retract. Yeah, no. <laughs> I always I always fail with these kind of cord reels. Reminds me of the Electrolux I grew up with. I fucking hated the cord reel on that. Um, and that's why I kind of don't like the cord reel on the Sebo K series. I much prefer just a button. The on off button is the handle on this as well, which is kind of weird. Let's see what we can get here. Let's see if it just. Huh? The fuck? All right, well, I broke it, but not in a way I can't fix it. So there was like a little tab. That little tab got, had a screw in it. So like literally, they like put the screw through this and mold it. I, I wonder how this was made. Anyways, that, that can be fixed. Oh, the fucking mechanism in here though. Yeah, that's fucking weird. Uh, show you the mechanism in here. All right, I don't know if you can see, but it's like a Archimedes screw <laughs> that the adjuster's on. It is super weird and mechanical for no reason. So now, I would be willing to bet after all that. Yep, everything just pops off. Pull this. <laughs> uh, that's kind of sexual. Um, uh, now the cord reel wants to go in. Again, this has all got to me secondhand and it doesn't have a funk to it, but it's kind of dirty. I want to wash it. Even if I wash it by hand. Yeah, yeah, you can see that Let's zoom in here. All right, you can see this crazy Archimedes screw thing on this potentiometer. No reason for that. It's ridiculous. It's unnecessary in like a hundred different ways. I thought Mila had done some weird potentiometers over the years, but that, that takes the cake. Uh, well, I got one screw here. And I would think there would be two more in the front if I had to guess, but I could be wrong. This is pretty sandwiched together. And it is sealed. It's sealed up like a... This actually reminds me of a Mila C1 almost, how it's put together on the inside. It's got that same cheapness to it. And that's why Bosch really couldn't exist is... They were making machines for apartment-sized homes and selling them to 
American sized homes where they were getting twice as much use and getting run down. And they were, like I said, they were, they were expensive. This was like, <laughs> the dealer cost on these were like 500 bucks. So, you know, this would be $1,200 machine to the customer. And it really isn't a $1,200 machine. I think this would have been acceptable at 500, but not 1,200. Well, actually. Yeah. It's like that there's something on here I need to unclip or unscrew. Uh, unclip. All right, that just came apart. Here's what I wanted to really clean out as I knew there'd be something like this in there for sound isolation. Oh, what kind of motor we got in here? This is different. Uh, made in Germany. Huh. Never seen one of these motors before. That's different. It looks like a Mila fan in there. Uh, but the motor is just completely different. Kind of cheap, if you would. All right, well, here's the cord rewind. And here's the switch under here, just the normal power switch we see on everything else. And you can see where the cord reel has just been fucking abused to fuck on this. Um, so I'm going to dish Bosch. It's going to go, the Bosch is going to go in a Bosch. Surprise, surprise. Uh, maybe not the top cover. These, the finishes on these tend to get dull. Maybe I will. I've, I don't want a repeat of what happened with the, uh, that one machine. So maybe I'll hand wash this piece. Uh, the tools, look at how they, they're really small and not so nice. Those will all go in there. Now I've gotten a lot of flack from people in the past about doing this, but I generally put vacuums in the dishwasher to clean them. I don't wash anything by hand unless it's like shiny plastic or something special. And I am putting it in a Bosch dishwasher and there's some significance to that. And the significance to the Bosch dishwasher is it's got an inline water heater. It doesn't actually have a heating element on the bottom, so it's not gonna melt anything. Uh, but some of the whirlpools and stuff don't do it. So make sure it's a Bosch, Mila, Asco, something like that has an inline heater. Uh, and I've used phosphated detergent. That's about it. And this, uh, this dishwasher's sole purpose is for washing vacuums. Well, that's finished its cycle. Nice and wet. Ah, oh, it's clean, much cleaner. So now it's time to put this bad boy back together. And I'm looking at this, because again, I've never done one of these before, so that's a little interesting in itself. And fortunately, some parts of mine are... Somebody cut this. Somebody did this to this vacuum. Because uh, they wanted this to fit flush, rather than just putting the right plug in on it, and it's a it's a real shame. It's cold. It's cold in my shop today. Um, it's gotten down to 54 when I look at this thermometer. You probably can't see it on camera, but it it's that's kind of cold for my shop, and I've had the heater going on all day. In fact, it's 13 degrees today uh, where I'm at, and it's going to drop down to eight. So let's get this back together. Um, one thing I noticed when I took this out of the dishwasher is it said 2,000 watts. Let's see if it'll focus on there. And because we're in America, we're putting a German motor in, we are going to put a 1,200 watt motor in here. And it's 50, 60 hertz compatible, which is interesting. 120 volt motor. Uh, but yeah, made in Germany. Or 1,400 watts is what it says says on the container, but what is that? You know, that might be the serial number I'm reading off there. I was reading, I was reading the number on here. Anyways, well, either way, it's not 2000 watts. That's, that's the point. This, this is a American motor, but the gasket is, I guess, the same. So we're going to put this in here. I washed this white thing. It's hard to tell, but I did wash that, deodorize that. And it's just all slips in here. This is all, again, like I said, this is very European. There are a lot of European vacuums that are built this way. This all seems pretty straightforward. I've never actually opened up this exact model before. I've opened up different machines, but never this one. Again, these are uncommon. They only brought them in for a few years. So 
you know, forgive me if you're in Europe and you're watching this or something, and you've, or if you've worked on a hundred of these, um, please just forgive my ignorance about all this. Uh, what is interesting is this piece. This is this was super interesting when I looked at this baffle, and how it gets diffused. So the motor actually sucks in, goes up, right? Goes up, goes up into this baffle, and has to work its way through these two little holes here up through here doing that. This is a basically a, a muffler chamber that's engineered into this. It's super cool. Um, let's see where the circuit board and all that good stuff sits. So I think part of this, this is gonna cool itself somewhere. Oh, okay, okay, so circuit board, gonna have to go. Okay, so the cord reel on this, Looking at this, and this is very different from a Mila cord reel. Um, it's going to have to go down like this, and these are going to make contact right there with how that works. So that means this board has to sit in here some somewhere somehow. Ah, that's cool. It's probably obvious when you look at this on camera. Okay, that's how that works. Again, that's a very oddly sexual shape. <laughs> um, Ah, okay, that makes sense. This transistor goes in here and gets cooled in there. Okay, all this is actually really straightforward now that I see. All right, sweet. And uh, like a lot of European machines, these wires seem very thin, but they, they're also solid. They're not stranded um, on a lot of these wires, so they can have a lot higher oomph through them, for lack of a better word. We'll use the word oomph. Um, all right, seems cool. So, uh, now the cord, I'm gonna give it three. Yeah, I wanna make sure it's got enough pre-sprung on there that it's good. And these, a friend of mine mentioned that a little bit of oil helps them out a whole lot on these leaf springs. And, you know, I, I kind of believe them, so I'm going to do that. It's talking. And there's a potentiometer also on this board that you could twist and probably does something that I'm not going to touch uh, as well. So throw that out there for anybody who's curious. I did see that. I'm not fucking with it, though. Oh, you know what? Haha. -ha. I see how this goes. So cord reel, then circuit board. Got it. All right, that, that's all cool. All right, that all makes sense. Um, that's, sorry if I'm making this seem like it's awkward. And again, I'm, I just never worked on a whole lot of these. So I'm like delighted to see all this cool stuff. Uh, okay, there we go. Took a minute, all that is settled. Let's see how this was put on. Mm -hmm. All right, so I can put one of these screws in just to hold the motor down, and we're going to test fire it. Unfortunately, I don't have a pre-motor filter. I've got one on the way as well. Again, I'm just trying to put this together. Maybe I'll turn the camera on when I get everything to show you. Oh, I heard a click in the board. Excellent. So let's get everything else back together. This is the thing that really I thought was really peculiar is how this all worked. You notice I put green marks on everything so that the potentiometer was going back in the right place uh, for however the slider lines up. And that, like I said, this is this just interacts with this on here. That's so cool. Uh, I was gonna put oil on this, but this seems to be like Teflon or something. This is really slippery plastic, not necessary. All right. And I don't see any. Uh, just checking to make sure there aren't any other screws I gotta put in. Let's see how many are on this cover. There's not a lot of screws on this machine. Again, really efficient manufacturing, really cool stuff. 
I got one here, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I got four screws. Sorry, the camera battery died here. Uh, hopefully we didn't lose too much. Put this on. So this cover just goes on like so. And I might have trouble putting this on because somebody cut this section on this particular example. So if you see me struggling, it might be because this one piece is kind of not where it should be. It is not good and tight. This is all lining up. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. You can see where somebody tried to pry this off at one point and didn't know what they were doing. I mean, not that I knew what I was doing, but that's kind of obvious how you remove all these screws. And again, with this machine being pretty old, we're not going to use an electric driver to put this tight. All this plastic also is, um, it's not as high quality as the Mila plastic that's used. Mila did eventually switch this to their C1 line, but it's, uh, yeah, the, the lid is made of a much stronger plastic than this stuff. Uh, but it, again, it all seems to be a-okay. Except for that, that plug just drives me crazy that somebody would do that. Like whoever, whoever did this, I don't ever want to find out who you are. That is just, it's a shame. Um, but why not? Vacuum saved. So this gap right here concerned me when I was first putting these screws in. And then I realized there's a nice big rope gasket that's going to go in there. It doesn't matter. All right. There's just one screw holding this on the back, so three screws holding most everything together. Uh, and this took a trip in the dishwasher as well. This just goes there. This is all just, like I said, wonderfully simple. Like, if they would make this with a, an EBK340 today, this vacuum would sell and be absolutely great. And I think that's the problem, is they, they never put the right nozzle pairing for the U.S. market. They never put one with a height adjustment. They only made one ever with a full-size nozzle. Most of these were sold as straight suction or with a, one of the compact nozzles, which, again, not right for most carpet. And Milo made that same mistake when they first introduced them. So, uh, well, I mean, I guess they always had a bigger nozzle, but the majority sold these smaller nozzles. And if you have low-pile carpet, I actually like the smaller nozzle. I've got no problems with them, but they're not right for half of people's carpet. All right, so that goes on like that. All right. Now we can wire everything. Yeah, okay. So in order to take the cover off, you got to have this. Okay, this all... Like, if you're putting this together in a factory, a lot of these things make sense. Um, there we go. There's the slider. Yep, I can see it moving in there. That's cool. You can see the slider in there. All right. Now we gotta let's rotate it, and we'll get we'll take care of all this. Uh, again, I have new filters on the way for this machine, um, so please. Uh, hold your comments on that. That I didn't forget the filter. I'm just trying to move this out of the way because I have other things I need to work on. Um, but rope gasket just goes back. And I put the rope gasket in the dishwasher, which cleaned it right up. And we're just going to use a little bit of pledge on it as well. I've got a brand new Bosch bag. Now, funny story is this is not a genuine Bosch bag, but it is a genuine Bosch bag. Bosch contracted a Turkish company, actually, to make their bags. And... When I was at the Vacuum Dealers Trade Association show in uh, 2020, right before the pandemic hit, um, they gave me a whole bunch of bags, and this is one of those bags. I have a whole stack of Bosch bags. Fortunately, I don't have a HEPA filter with me today, but I will have one eventually here, so don't worry about that. Yeah, this one is a little spent. That makes sense. That's all good. 
bag is in there. You can see it's wonderful. Uh, this is kind of cool, the tool, removable tool caddy. There were a couple vacuums that did this back in the day. Sanitaire amongst one of them. Wasn't that uncommon. Let me go clean this up real quick. All right, so I have cleaned this up. I'll just put that back. And there's our Bosch. Let's wipe it down real quick. Well, I think it looks better than how I found it. It's definitely a lot cleaner inside. Comment below if you've had one of these or had the opportunity to use one of these. Um, really is a interesting vacuum. Um, I've got the actual flyer as well as I've shown probably hopefully by now uh, from when these were sold and how much these cost and stuff. Man, I might need to polish this, actually get the heavy duty uh, polish out and polish that, but I think it looks all right now. We'll see. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss our latest videos. Thanks for watching, everybody. Check out the links below. Consider joining the conversations on one of our other platforms or publishers, and have yourself a wonderful day.